Good day. Lazy buns are bloke. Here go. Good day, guys. Hello. Hello, Leo. Up. Leo up. Leo up. Come. Up here. Up. 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 Leo up. Leo up. Good boy. Leo's doing pretty well now. He's healing up. He's still got his stitches, but he's on the men's and he hasn't ripped it back open. And I think he's only got about five days left until he gets his stitches out. So Leo's doing pretty well. So that's good news. 1400 bloody dollars though. Anyway, it's all right. He's worth it. We love him. We love him so much. Anyway, guys, today is a super, super cool special day. We are getting a new pot or some new shoes or one new shoe for this red gum. So the red gum today is going to go into its first ever bonsai pot. And another cool thing is we're going to be able to expose the base that's hidden in there. That's hidden in the depth beneath. So there's a, uh, there's actually probably a good base on that because when I collected it, it had, ooh, dog just farted, don't know if you heard that. He's on his medication <laughs> and his medication for anti-inflammatories and um, antibiotics, for some reason he's been farting a lot. <laughs> um, but anyway, is what it is. So... We're going to expose the, it's basically a raft style, I guess, but it's sort of like a clump, but this is all one tree, this red gum. And what's happened is, for those who don't know the backstory of this one, it was in the paddock uh, in between the vines and every day I used to slash it, well not every day, but when I slashed, I would slash this tree. And then one day I thought I'll just pull it out and see what happens. Pulled it out, it was in a raft style um, because it had been slashed, it spread sideways rather than growing up like a normal red gum would. And so what I thought I would do is just grow it out and see. And these branches are way, way, way fatter than they ever used to be. They used to be tiny and I've had it for 12 years, I think. Been growing it for 12 years. And in that whole time, it's never been in a pot. The last two years, I've defoliated it. So early days, it used to drop branches all the time, this tree. Um, you can see this one at the front here. It used to drop a lot of branches all the time, this red gum. And I decided about two years ago, I'll give it a trial to defoliate it during summer. So I defoliated it once and it actually back budded and put out new branches where there hadn't been a branch or a shoot for many years. And I thought, what a beauty of an idea, let's do it again. And last summer I actually defoliated it twice. So there was a couple of people that commented saying I shouldn't have done twice, twice is too much. Another guy said my leaves are massive even after all this work done to it. But I disagree, they're pretty small. I mean. They're only inch and a half to two inches mainly, which is pretty good for a red gum leaf. So I'm not sure where that person got off, but I was told that my leaves are still way too big. I think they're actually reducing pretty well. Um, so, yeah, basically I've trimmed it. I haven't even tried to style this tree. This tree, that's another thing I've done clip and grow and I have literally let the tree decide where it wants to go. And all I do is every time it grows, I reduce where it grew back to only two branches per location and shorten any long shoot back to only one internode. And over time, originally internode lengths used to be like this. Over time, as it's got more and more dense, um, internode length has reduced significantly and now the defoliations happened and the second defoliation the internode lengths now are like tiny like 
less than the width of my little finger. So I feel like I'm getting the red gums under control, or the one red gum. But now it makes me sad that I didn't start more red gums um, in the past. So I think I'll get some more red gum and maybe plant them in the ground at my house because they can, a red gum can dig okay. They're not too bad to dig. So that's pretty cool. So I might get some more red gums, plant them in the ground, water them well, and then I can, um, yeah, hopefully collect them later on with a decent sized trunk because they get a decent sized trunk in only four or five years, you'll have a really big trunk. And if you chop, trunk chop it every year, maybe let it grow two years solid, then after that, every year chop it off, um, you should be able to develop a pretty good trunk pretty quickly and have a single tree and then have many different trunks or branches or, and stuff, you know, on the way up. But pretty interesting. I'm gonna, I definitely am gonna get some more. So um, they always seem really healthy. Never look back, put out lots of growth. Super, super heavy on the water in the summer, the red gum, but a really well suited tree to Australia and really nice image that they put out and pretty easy to look after. I must be honest, pretty easy to look after. They don't have many problems. They do get a fungus sometimes in um, summer, on a more humid summer. And they can also get this bug that crawls around in the leaf and eats the leaf. But that's not a big deal. If that happens, just defoliate it because I've found defoliating seems to work anyway. Oh, also, I've got my mic sitting here on my shirt because <sighs> problem is I've got decibels turned to minus 30, which is the... the most I can reduce decibels on my mic. And even at minus 30, the phone, which is a video camera, still overpowers the sound. And then when I do my intro, it goes crackly, which you guys would have heard. So sometimes it overpowers and it goes crackly. And I knew that was happening. I was just sort of putting up with it and... Anyway, so I'm trialing it on the, my shirt down here now, and hopefully it won't go crackly. So let me, let me know how that goes, guys. But anyway, I've been here talking for at least, at, least, at least 30 seconds, probably 30 seconds, and it's time to get into it. So what I'm going to do today, obviously repot it. So the pot that I'm going to put it into is, if anyone watched my last video with Luke Parsons, the interview... And if you haven't watched it, please go back and watch it because it is super cool and you don't want to miss it. So go and watch that one in the last video. And we're going to put it into his pot that he made, which is a pot from a really awesome subscriber. You know who you are, Mrs. Anonymous. And she wanted to remain anonymous, but she's just helped me out by sending me a pot. She also sent me a pot a year ago. So this is a second pot that she's kindly donated to me, which is super awesome. And I just, you know, got no words for it. She's donated two pots from Luke Parsons now at around 250 a pot. So super awesome, really, really generous person. And I really appreciate it. Stuff like that, you know, melts your heart. It's just beautiful that people do that for you and really cool. So, obviously we're going to repot it into here. I'm going to try and keep some moss. I did collect some moss. Okay. So, I did collect a little bit of moss while it was still daylight outside. It won't be daylight for very much longer. It's pretty much dark. Um, we're still almost second month of winter finished. But the next video you'll see, spring has sprung. <laughs> One of my trees is already deciduous ash, desert ash, is already pushing out its first set of leaves. So that's going to be the next video, repotting that one. 
gum. As far as repotting the red gum, red gums grow all year round. They don't stop. It's got all fresh new growing tips on it right now. In actual fact, Australian gum trees quite often will shoot pretty vigorously in the middle of winter because they know that they've got the water there and they actually shoot pretty vigorously. And if the top's shooting, you know the roots are shooting. So these are okay to repot in winter, spring, autumn. Some people recommend repotting them in the middle of summer. I don't. I never would. I'd never stress a tree out in the middle of a 40 degree day and then repot it. I think that's just a myth or a load of baloney. I tend to think that autumn, winter or spring is fine for an Australian native gum. So that's my take on it. And I've never had a problem when I have repotted it. It hasn't been repotted for a long time. It's super, super compact in here. <laughs> like to the point where it was hard to get water to penetrate into the soil um, and I even think that I put it into a water bath at some stage just to keep it moist during the middle of summer so there that's it so I'm just going to trim it back now probably on hyperlapse then we're going to clean the top of the soil and see what we can find under here I'm super super excited and I hope you guys are to see what's under here in the raft um, hopefully we can find some really really cool stuff under there and then we're going to repot it and put it into this cool cool pot and yeah let's hope this all turns out pretty well guys um, let's get to trimming it i'll maybe just demonstrate a couple of trimmings just in case someone's new to the channel and hasn't seen me trim something like this before i was going to bring it in closer but the tree pretty much takes up the whole screen anyway so all I'm going to do is I'm just going to chop off, you can see this back budding down here caused by defoliation. Without defoliation I guarantee you none of that would have grown. Defoliation seems to keep branching and also promote new back budding on your tree. So really, really cool. So yeah, basically just get rid of some shoots in locations that you don't want them. Um, chop back long shoots to the first internode pretty much on a red gum you would say the first internode's reasonably short and then after that it does get a lot longer very quickly so first internode and also while we're doing this oh man the smell the smell of the eucalypt is just amazing. Absolutely beautiful. Oh, beautiful. Anyway, you will notice with the defoliation, you actually get in quite a few spots, you'll get three or four shoots from one location. So on the tip here, I hope you guys can see that. I'll try to put my hand behind there. I don't know what the clarity is like there, but there's four shoots. So because it's the top of the tree, I'm going to opt for the two smaller shoots. And not only the two smaller shoots, but the two smaller shoots that are out of they're out of blah, 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 blah. the two smaller shoots that are at a more acute angle rather than a really wide angle, which makes an unnatural transition to the next branching. I'm cutting the actual outside two off, okay, and keeping the ones that are more um, more of an acute angle so that it just gives you a better more natural feel of the branching if you were to keep the two outside ones and cut the middle one off you basically end up with a real I don't know like a bullhorn or a yeah so you want to keep the two nicer uh, angle ones the less angle between the two gives you a nicer transition so basically that's all I'm doing cutting off branches or buds or shoots in places that I don't want shortening everything back to the first node or the new growth only the new growth old growth I'm leaving I'm letting this tree dictate the direction that it wants to go on its own and I'm literally just all the new growth chop it back to one internode 
select the best two branches at the best angle and that's it that's the only three things I need to remember on this tree everything else I'm gonna just let it do its own thing and I'm not gonna try and tell it what to do it's gonna tell me what to do this tree and so far that's how I've treated this tree the whole time I've let it tell me what to do and and where it wants to go and I think it's working out pretty good but yeah super excited about this repot I will keep some moss on the top but I'll bring you to that after let's trim the tree on hyperlapse thanks very much guys let's get into it Good day guys, welcome back. Well all the trimming's done. It's all looking pretty good. Hello. <laughs> You're a good boy. Love you so much, Papa. Nice bum scratch. So, just to show you the size of these leaves. Okay, these are the biggest leaves that were on the tree. Now, a real sized red gum. So these were the biggest leaves, remember? Real sized red gum, look at that. That is probably only a third the real size. And what's left on the tree would only be a fifth. So what's left on the tree. Okay, let's just chop a shoot off just to show you. Is that big? Compared to the biggest that was on there. Compared to a normal size tree. So I'll bring a, bring a close up of that. Oh, I don't know if I can, it might not focus. Right, so real size leaf on the left, the biggest leaf that was on the tree, and what's left on the tree, the biggest that's left on the tree. Big leaf from a normal sized red gum. The biggest leaves that were on this red gum. And probably well, what's left on here now? See, you can see, if it was like that, yeah, they're massive. But they reduce really well. They would be lucky to be a fifth the size of what they used to be. And it's just awesome how much they actually do reduce. So, red gums, definitely a go. If you haven't got one, give it a go. I'm definitely going to do more. But anyway, let's see how much I cut off this thing. A lot. So let's sweep that away. Right, next step, let's get this out of the pot. Good technique. I mean, hurts your hand a bit if you've got a sharp lip like this one. So I'll just put my jumper over. It's just to hit the rim of the pot. Get around to the other side. Ooh, don't break something. Um, and then just give that a bit of a whack as well. Reel it off. Super dense root ball on this thing. One thing about having the mic down here is hard not to bang on it and I hope I don't do it too much. I'll try not to. Now, one thing I will want to do is I'll just go and get my scraper and I just want to collect a little bit more of this moss because I'm afraid that I haven't collected enough from outside. So now basically what we're going to do is we're just going to scratch around on the surface. I'll probably do most of it with the high pressure hose to be honest, that's my go to. Um, but I will also have a bit of a scratch around on the surface with a gift that I got from a subscriber. It was Dragonfly Wire or something. He made that for me. Super cool root rake. And basically, I don't want to get it on my dog because Leo's down there. And basically, just scrape 
keep scraping the you can keep sp scraping the top layer of stuff away until you find the good roots. But you know what? To be honest, bugger that. I just take it out to the high pressure hose and go for it. And you can see, like I said, you got good growth on the top. Don't worry, the roots are probably moving too. Look at this. Beautiful new white root growing there, which means, and a few more, which means should be fine to do some work on it. So what I'll do is I'm gonna get the saw and I'm gonna give it a good chop on the bottom because we've got to get it into a shallower pot somehow. And like I've always said, you cannot, if you raked it all out, to get it into a shallow pot. Whatever you rake out, you're gonna chop off anyway. So you may as well save yourself the issue of raking all that out. You could rake that whole lot out there, okay? But what are you gonna do? You're gonna end up chopping it off anyway, once you've raked it out. So you may as well just, you know, bloody chop it off now. Save yourself all the effort. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm just going to chop a layer of cake. Like I say, take a slice of cake off the bottom. That's what I've always said. Okay. So, there's our slice of cake of roots come off the bottom. Put it on the ground, make a hell of a bloody mess. Jesus. And um, now, I think... What we'll do is I'll take it outside in the light and give it a good hose off. I might bring you guys out there this time just to show you how I do it. Um, because this is a pretty awesome repotting of an awesome tree. Look at this guys. Bloody dog. Eat my hose end sprayer. Buggered it. My god, who would have dogs? I love them, but Jesus, man. So, I found this one. A nice cheapo. See how she goes. I have to get a new one. Bloody dogs. Got a resident bar now. Flying around our property. And lives here these days. And he just went down over there. I don't think I got him, but... He's trying to keep our mice population under control. G'day guys, well, the contrast is not great because the leaves of the tree are the same colour as the lawn and the white on the trunk is the same as the dead grass on the lawn. So anyway, we've got this hose ready. And basically what we're going to do is we're just going to squirt the top off to try and reveal the roots and the raft if it's still a raft i don't know whether it's become three individual trees or not but yeah pretty exciting i'm pretty excited to do it and let's see what we got and basically i'll just squirt the sides and the bottom a bit okay all right precious poo at the moment let's hope we get a bit more pressure than that Two pressure. Bloody dog eating my bloody. Hose sprays made things very difficult. No crappy pressure. Puppy dogs. Mm. So yeah, basically just keep washing the top of the soil away. 
until you expose some decent roots just keep going and then the sides just sort of wash around the sides for a bit expose some roots not so critical and the bottom I'll just give it a bit of a wash as well so yeah that's basically it just keep going around and around until you can see some roots but yeah the pressure is pretty bad at the moment I don't want to get my high pressure hose out but it's pretty bad Good day guys, finished cleaning, red gum put up a big fight so I had to go and get the high pressure cleaner out because the dog ate the other hose end spray which sort of half decently cleaned things but anyway let's get close to this root ball and I'll show you so you can see it's an actual full raft style with some pretty cool trunk structure, big hollow in there. And we've now exposed the base. Unfortunately, I had to really high pressure clean it to get rid of the soil because it held onto it so hard. So it has made that sort of white, but that's okay. Don't worry. That'll heal over and we're going to probably bring the soil level up to about there. So let's do that. Other side, a little bit uglier. Could possibly chop some of these top roots off and go with a sub layer. So let's maybe do that. Don't want to go too hard on it though. And, you know, risk killing the tree. But at the same time, don't want to... Um, you know, go to all this effort to pot it into a nice pot. You don't want to not go the whole way. And then later on want to cut it back further. So let's get it, let's get these top roots gone for now. Even this one gone. And we'll, you know, expose everything we can now. Now the scissors don't close. Oh no. I thought I had my root pruning scissors, but I've actually got my proper uh, bonsai scissors. That's bad, 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 Sammy, bad. Okay, let's. I thought I had my root pruning scissors, which I didn't. So now I've bent the handle, trying to cut through a solid root. But that's all right, I'll fix it later. Not damaged for good, but anyway. So what we're trying to do here is just clean off all these top roots to allow us to see the whole trunk here. Okay. And we clean them off down to that level. So then the back should match pretty much the front so a lot of those top roots are gone and if we plant it all at that angle now or that level should be all good should be able to see some back ones see some front ones and we'll be all good so let's do that chop a couple of these light ones off the top and you can see chop a few of these little guys off the side so that the main root can head down into the soil and yeah we'll be able to see a decent amount of base on this tree now which will be pretty cool because before it was all hidden and couldn't really see this tree a lot of people called it a clump style or a multi-tree forest, but it wasn't. It was always been just one single tree in basically was a raft style. Looks more like a clump style now, I have to be honest. But originally it was more of a raft style. Wow. Beautiful base, big fat, beautiful base. You can see there's still heaps of roots on here, heaps of roots underneath. So not a risk. 
it will be fine but I don't want to go too silly on it you know what I mean I'll just leave it at that I think and we'll repot it at that level and we should be all good super cool Super, super cool. I'll just get rid of a couple of crossing roots here so we can hopefully show off some of the better looking roots. But yeah, pretty cool tree. And like I say, this was just collected from the vineyard 12 years ago and just grown slowly ever since so wow look at that as you can see this big hollow here there used to be dead wood in amongst it but the dead wood has just rotted off and it's gone but that's the base that's left so pretty cool right i'll bring you guys back further let's get it in a pot and yeah Get it repotted. Good day, guys. Welcome back. Well, after a bit of searching, I've managed to find a bit of screen which I'm putting in the bottom of the pot. I'll put a decent layer of soil in there. Layer or fill it up? Hmm, <laughs> maybe too much. Put some back. We do want to lift the pot, uh, lift the pot, lift the tree a fair bit in the pot, but maybe not quite that much. So we'll get rid of it a little bit. Okay. Um, yeah, I feel like that might be enough. All right. Now. I've chosen the front of the pot that I like the most. It's got a fair bit of brown in it. Um, there's some more green in that side. Fair bit of brown in that side and more brown in that side. Now I quite like the brown look on that side from Luke Parsons' pot. Like I say, if you didn't watch his the video where I interview him, go back and watch it because it's a pretty cool video. And, you know, also go and buy a pot from him. He can send it anywhere in the world. As long as you pay the postage, he will send you a pot. So you get a special pot from Luke Parsons, as long as you're willing to pay the postage. So let's just wriggle this tree in a bit. It's pretty good. I quite like that sort of level. Now... It's probably the only repot it's going to get for a fair few years, so let's make sure we do it good. It looks pretty bloody good. I reckon we can leave it like that. So the soil level will be down here, which will leave enough room for the moss on top. I'm pretty happy with that. Really happy. Super, super happy. So let's put a bit of soil on top. Of these roots. This tree is going to have more room than it ever had probably even in that tub so it should be pretty happy in here. I probably would not put a red gum in too small a pot. I would probably err on the side of too big a pot because I feel like they need a lot of moisture in summer. So yeah, just, you know, maybe err on the side of a big pot. This is certainly a big pot for it, but it has got quite a wide canopy, and especially when it fills out a little bit more, the canopy should be fine, and it should really match this pot. So I purposely ordered the biggest pot I could from Luke, because... Of that exact reason I wanted plenty of moisture didn't want it to dry out and as the tree develops it'll fit this pot beautifully 
and it'll mean I don't have to repot it for a long, long time. So it could even stay in this pot now for another five to ten years without a repot. You don't have to repot things all the time unless it actually needs a repot. So it could last close to 10 years in this pot. So basically I'm just going to push down with my fingers, really get it in there, maybe scoop a bit of soil out the back, a bit too much in the back. Okay, and now we're going to put some moss on top. Moss does a few things. One, it's a bit of an indicator on how much moisture is in the pot. If it dries right out, it means that the moisture in your pot has really gone downhill. Um, and also, it creates a cool zone on top. A bit like Nigel Saunders likes to put some rocks on top and it keeps the soil sort of cool. Um, the moss does the same. It sort of keeps the top of your soil reasonably cool um, and gives the root zone a little bit more area to grow into because without the moss on top probably your top inch of soil will get, be too dry and you'll never get roots in there but once you put moss on there you'll see you get roots right to the surface as I did before which is why it was so hard for me to um, I guess wash out with the uh, high pressure hose it was quite hard to wash out. So what I'll do is I'll put some moss around the place and we'll moss it right up. I might do this mainly on a hyperlapse. And we've got heaps of moss over here too, which I collected. So we'll mainly do it on hyperlapse, but just showing you guys go around mossy tree doesn't matter whether you use a small bit or a big bit of moss doesn't matter just put it in there nicely and try to cover up pretty much all of your soil and if you can do that you should end up with a nice looking bit of moss ready for a show so i'm going to make sure that i don't moss up the trunk and I leave some of these roots exposed because that was the whole aim of repotting it was to expose a lot of the base of this tree. So I don't want to put moss right up the trunk but I do want to keep the top of the soil nice and moist by mossing it because without mossing it dries out in the summer sun pretty easily so we'll get some nice moss growing here should be good right so I'll just finish mossing it I'll do it on hyperlapse let's do that good day guys welcome back well, we got the moss on. Last thing to do, water the tree down. Hopefully wash off some of the dirt that's stuck to the tree. And because I've um because I've planted it fairly low in this pot or low enough, I can actually get a decent amount of water now around the rim without it running off. Which will mean that in summer when it gets watered, a lot of it will be able to soak in. And over time I'm sure the tree will lift up in the pot a bit. Which will then, you know, cause it to need another repot later on. But for now, it's actually a really nice height in the pot to be able to water it. Let it really soak in, especially when you fertilise. It allows all the fertiliser to soak in, but pretty cool. That's the tree repotted into Luke Parsons' pot. Pretty bloody exciting. And we're able to expose a really nice, nice root base. So, um, 
you know, the raft style or the clump style. But you can see it's all part of the same tree and it still is, which is really cool and super exciting. So, you know, we cut a fair bit of the roots off, I will admit. We cut a lot off, but red gums are pretty hardy. You wouldn't do this on a Malaluka. Definitely not on a Malaluka. You wouldn't cut it back this hard. Red gums are pretty hardy, so I'm pretty confident. If I wasn't confident, I wouldn't have done it. But you can see before the soil level was here, and we could only see the three trunks coming up. Probably even here. We could only see the three trunks coming up. Now we've reduced the soil level way, way, way down. And now you can see the whole lot of the raft. And it's just made this tree so much better. Um, also Luke's pot obviously has made it way, way better too because it is a super cool pot. Um, if you didn't watch the video, he hand dropped it off. Did an interview. Please support him get some of his pots but anyway look at that guys even the back is pretty cool okay generally it leans a long way forward okay but pretty cool super cool just love this tree it's got a lot of dirt on the trunk from me spraying it down but you know I'll wash it off later for now, you just have to imagine the nice smooth trunks. So the bark on these does exfoliate as it gets older and it strips off, so that'll add an extra thing. So yeah, we've got smaller leaves coming along, defoliate it in summer. Got it repotted now, beautiful, new pot. It's just up and up and up from here, I think. Pretty cool. Love this tree. Cheers for watching, guys. I'll um, give you a bit of a closer spin on the way out, but thank you very much, guys. Ended up a longer video than I thought it would be, but had to pay this tree some respect that it deserved and do a thorough job. So I'll give you guys a spin of the base. You can see, wow, look at that. Beautiful. Dead branch here, super cool base here, interesting dead bit here which is calloused right over. And these trunks are getting quite big, super cool. And then if we're able to, let's just spin around. Like that, at soil level, pretty cool. And then let's do a spin, look at that up into the tree. Look at the chunks, let's do a spin up into the tree. Look at that, bloody beautiful. She's a perler, I love this tree. And she's doing really well. So there you go. Beautiful pot, suits it beautifully. Looking up into the tree, look at that. Bloody beautiful. Beauty. Cheers guys, thanks for watching. And I'll catch you next time, cheers.